ดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิด
uh, uh, developments uh, for setting up the new intellectual property systems. So let me, um, so will you share the PowerPoint or I have yes, to share? We can, we can share that from our side as well. If, if you, look, you would like to share from your side, that's fine. Yes, uh, you are you are share, right? Uh, yes, we can share. Uh, just a second. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yes, we are sharing from our side. It will probably take a minute to upload it. It's fine. Uh, do share it. Okay. Okay. So let me introduce myself first. Our, I am our Dr. Momoto. Deputy Director General and Head of Intellectual Property Department. So um, as I uh, mentioned in introduction, I was taking part in a leading role for drafting of the intellectual property laws that was adopted in 2019. So um, there are a very long way that we have to uh, pass it uh, for drafting and you know adoptions of the intellectual property law because this is a quite concern of Myanmar. So that is why we have to do several types of discussions with internal and stakeholders, uh, various stakeholders, and as well as others, international organization and WIPO experts and other experts from uh, uh, Japan, you, uh, you, uh, EU, and as well as uh, US and others are uh, ASEAN member states as well. So um, as you know that our current IP laws have already uh, adopted in 2019. So our uh, trademark law industrial design law was adopted 2019, the same day that it jet the year of January. Our patent law is a little, little, a little bit late, 11 March 2019, and copyright law is 23, 23rd of May uh, 2019. So although uh, these four law has adopted, but we have we need to have it, uh, uh, some preparations and internal status uh, that we have to uh, overcome to implement these IPR laws. That is why we uh, have uh, to be declared again uh, by the president uh, to enforce these laws. So we are quite trying um, to have it the chance in within early this year uh, to enforce these IPR laws as soon as possible. According to the IPR laws, next slides. According to the IPR laws, uh, we have to have it um, some institutional structures that uh, is the basic requirements for the implementation of IPR laws. As you know that we are uh, at first uh, setting up the IP department, intellectual property department under the Department of Research and Innovation under the Ministry of Econ or, or Education. However, now we have to move according to the law uh, the focal ministries become a ministry of commerce. That is why in this uh, year, we have to um, make a, a very huge preparations from uh, department moving from ministry, one ministry to another ministry. So that is a great task as well, are uh, not only the staffs, not only the budget system, and also we have to try 
going forward to have a separate department. So that is why uh, we have to uh, harmonize uh, with the two ministerials uh, format and to get it the chance to be a uh, stand, you know, uh, as a department. Now, our department is, uh, uh, is uh, government has approved to setting up the Department of Intellectual Property. So uh, it's, uh, it, it means that we are not a sub-department under the, uh, the, 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 the Department of, uh, like a Department of Research and Innovation, we become like a DRI. So that is why uh, we, uh, Ministry of Commerce will be the full ministry for implementations of the, these four IPR laws. So now, uh, first institutions that was Department of Intellectual Property Right uh, as well, government has already approved in last 24th of December. And uh, now we are uh, officially moving from Ministry of Education to Ministry of Commerce. <clears throat> and uh, in the law, uh, relevant ministries is really, uh, is quite related, no, 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 uh, that, that one. Uh, quite uh, related ministries, Re relevant ministry is uh, Ministry of Information is quite concerned uh, with the, uh, the, the, the copyright law. So we have to close collaboration with the Ministry of Information regarding with the, um, uh, the copyright implementation and awareness reasons and other activities. Uh, that is, uh, uh, the, this uh, ministry is, um, is the close collaboration with together uh, our Department of Intellectual Property and Ministry of Industries for Design, and Ministry of Agriculture and Education, uh, that is for, uh, that, is, uh, that is for uh, the, the one uh, of the, the, the plant variety protections uh, that was under the uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Education. So uh, that is why we need uh, quite collaboration with the uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Education and also formal trademark registration is under them. So that is why we have to, our, our make balance to harmonize with the uh, current new system and they are, their old system have to be, have it uh, uh, match with each other. That is why we have to close collaboration with this ministry. And Ministry of Education, of course, our technology concern, trade, technology transfer and innovation promotion. So we have to be working together with the Ministry of Education. So that is why uh, Department of Intellectual Property now are, is the, uh, uh, quite close uh, uh, the collaboration plan with these four ministries. So let me continue our the organizational structures that in order to implement in, in order to in, in order to implement the uh, IPR laws. So uh, in order to implement the IPR laws, uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, so IP central committees. So, uh, that is a three uh, institutional structures. So you can see it, IP Central Committee, IP Agency, and Department of Intellectual uh, Property. The, these three institutions have to be taken care for the implementations of the IPR laws. So IP Central Committee is leading by the vice president as a chair. So uh, the Ministry of Commerce, the uh, minister is the deputy uh, vice president and the deputy minister is the secretariat. So uh, there are others ministry of concerns who are working together as, a, uh, as in the member of the central committees. So these central committee that we have to be uh, work for policy making and as well as uh, to setting up the policy and roadmap, how we have to going forward uh, to the implementations of the four IPLOs uh, as, as, as systematically. And second step is the IB agency. That IB agency is the one of the implementation body under uh, the, uh, the, 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 the upper layer of the Department of Intellectual Property. So Department of Intellectual Property, now we have already formed uh, the under the Ministry of Commerce, uh, we're taking care for the, all the uh, application registrations, application registrations. So that is why, uh, uh, so the, all these uh, registrations uh, that we receive and examining and granting the, uh, the IPR rights uh, according to the subject that they would like to have it. So if making decisions by the Department of Intellectual Property Director General, so the applicant can have it a chance to go uh, another step to IB agency that uh, they need to be making sure 
how uh, their rights uh, can be uh, continued to uh, request to have it if they don't please the decision making by the Director General of the Department of Intellectual Property. So these three agency, uh, these three are uh, the, the institutions are very, these three are institutions are, are, are very closely working together for implementations of the IPR laws. So let me continue, IP Central Committee members. So um, in our IP Central Committee has already formed in March, 16, uh, March 6, 2020. So, uh, so uh, the total number is the 31 members of the, uh, the, 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 uh, the members uh, who are governed by the uh, vice presidents. So um, we have already uh, make it uh, the first meeting of the IP Central Committee, uh, third term 2020 at the Ministry of Commerce, Nibido. So um, uh, this is a really a uh, stepping stone uh, that we could have it a uh, remarkable day uh, that we have successfully uh, hold the IP Central Committee. So in this first meeting, we can uh, propose it are uh, all the procedural that we have to going forward are uh, for implementations of the IPR law. So that is why uh, all the Central Committee members giving us a very good advice and you know uh, suggestions how we should go in forward so according to the guidelines are uh, that we receive it uh, from that uh, central committee first meeting we are uh, we um well, we are now implementing according to the uh, the, the confirmations are uh, made by the this central committee so um As I, I have said, uh, transfer process between MOE to MOC. Now we are currently um, are, 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 are moving uh, uh, from the Ministry of Education to Ministry of Commerce. Still, we are, have to work in according to the internet, uh, internet procedures, all the uh, moving of the staffs and recruitment of the new staffs and training of the staffs, and as well as uh, how uh, we have to be uh, necessity preparations for the receivings of the applications over the counter and as well as online registrations and other things. So there are several um, uh, several jobs that we have to uh, solve. You know, uh, we have to work on it and to solve the, the solutions uh, the, to, to get the solutions uh, for uh, facing uh, the some our uh, internal uh, barrier as well. So uh, it's one of the our success of the uh, that we can uh, have it successfully setting up the Department of Intellectual Property under the Ministry of Commerce is the, the, the 33rd uh, December 2020. But uh, we, our Ministry of Commerce, are, have, um, are uh, appointed to us under, under, under their structures in 24th December 2020. So um, it is uh, our, our great progress. And uh, I, I would like to show you uh, the IB agency, IB central committee and uh, organizational structures that we have approved. So director general, deputy director general and 13 department will be included. So in, 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 in such a sense, uh, in, uh, in, in such a sense, uh, we will uh, we will have it uh, 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 supporting department and as well as the registration department. As you, you can see it, uh, <clears throat> we will have it the uh, four subject, trademark uh, division, uh, copyright division and uh, copyright division, patent divisions, and as well as uh, industrial design divisions. These four department are the main department for the registrations of the, 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 the applications of the IPR rights. And uh, we will have it the uh, sub department in uh, two places. One is from uh, one is in Yangon City, and another is in uh, um, Mandalay City. That is why we have a two sub department under the structure. And others, um, so so all together six departments are uh, uh, or, or for for the uh, for the, uh, the the registration uh, uh, purpose that we we form it. Other sporting department like uh, international affairs and public uh, outreach division, uh, planning policy and planning, and also legal and uh, mediation division, admin and budget 
finance, the finance divisions or sporting department. And uh, one thing uh, we also uh, have it, the, the Central Committee and Agency Affairs Division uh, that is uh, working for the IP agency. And in the future, IP agency will be a very huge task uh, for the implementations of the IPR laws because uh, the, uh, the, the relation with the IP department uh, so um, that IB agency, uh, under the IB agency, they will have it, uh, they have to form uh, the working group uh, that have to be implemented according to the some registrations and some uh, appeal uh, uh, procedure that they have to uh, running uh, under the IB agency uh, uh, task force. Uh, then let me show the another, uh, the locations for the department of IP. So now our main department is uh, in Nebido, uh, Building 52, Ministry of Commerce, Nebido. In Yangon, sixth floor of the Export Import Office and the Department of Trade uh, under the MOC, Strand Road, Yangon. So now we are preparing for opening uh, the sub department in Yangon and under preparations uh, currently. In Mandalay, uh, we are requesting the place that we have to be setting up. Uh, currently, we are working for that as well. So there will be three places for implementations. So let me show you the, uh, the, the IP loss implementation plan. So as you know that, our, 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 we will have it, uh, several tasks that we have to going forward for implementations of the IP loss. So that is why uh, So we would like to have it a step-by-step -step plan uh, that will be uh, uh, smoothly uh, and systematically running of the IB department. So that is why uh, uh, so, uh, we we will start uh, for implementation of the trademark law first. So as you know that uh, we uh, have already have it the soft opening and our six months after we will have it the grand opening. That's uh, our first plan, uh, but uh, we uh, we would like to uh, we would like to have it the a uh, 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 more earlier stage uh, to have it the implementations of the trademark law as well. So um, the, after six months of the trademark, uh, the, then uh, we will uh, introduce uh, to have it the system, a registration system for industrial designs and copyright. Then uh, next six months later, Next six months, uh, we will uh, we will offer the patent utility model and GI registrations. So for that patent and GI, that uh, we have to work uh, many things uh, for uh, for implementations of the laws because not only our side that uh, we can uh, we can uh, we, we we can offer it, but also others you know um, user sites and as well as some collaboration that we would like to. Or make it or for implementation of these, these two uh, subjects. So that is why our plans are that we have to do it. Uh, but um, in these days, uh, uh, the, the government uh, also would like to uh, would like to have it the enforcement of the IPR laws as soon as possible. Uh, now we are, um, are, are making making are, are making balance of our workload and as well as our plan how we can be going our earlier stage uh, for implementations of these, these four plans, uh, but are still uh, working on that matter. So um, as you know that uh, for implementations of the IPR laws that we need a rules, uh, rules uh, for registrations. So that is why trademark law that we have to work for a uh, rules for trademark registration and rules for geographical indication. Trademark law registrations have already do this uh, stakeholder consultation, and um, now uh, we have already submitted to the Union General, Union Attorney General Office. So uh, we hope that um, sooner or later uh, that we can have it uh, some our uh, comments from the UAGO and we can go forward for confirmations by the government. For rules of geographical integration is the drafting state. For industrial design, patent law, and copyright law, there are rules that have uh, are, are under un, under drafting, uh, draft, drafting state, and we will are, are now in very good uh, position uh, that we can conduct the stakeholder consultations early of this year.
and also for implementation of the IPR laws, forms and fees and others uh, necessity order that we have to make under the Ministry of Commerce. So that is why our for uh, trademark law and others uh, are, are, are other laws for implementations. We are uh, currently preparations and forms and forms and fees, and as well as uh, we have to going forward. Uh, for uh, confirmations uh, uh, from the others ministry of concern. Uh, so that is why, um, although we are simultaneously working on it, uh, but our trademark is uh, more faster. And now we have already uh, um, uh, uh, submitted uh, these uh, forms and fee status uh, to the other ministry of concern to get the co uh, comments. And we can go forward, uh, I think within this month. But others, uh, uh, others are uh, subject matter. So we are uh, working on it, and 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 also uh, not too um, uh, uh, not not too far away from the trademark uh, trademark condition. So that uh, these subjects also can be going forward for our um, having the confirmations. So let me show you the some summary of the preparations of the establishment of the, uh, uh, the our IP, IP department, uh, department of IP status. So as I, I told you that organizational structures that our IP central committee have already formed, department of IP have already formed, but IP agency, for IP agency, according to the law that we have to um, uh, uh, search for it, IP experts uh, to take in part are in working for the future IP matters. So that is why we are currently drafting the IP agency rules uh, that we need to be proposed uh, to the government. And our for uh, the office, I, IP office structure, uh, are now currently we are, uh, are situated uh, in building number 52 of the Ministry of Commerce and other two are, are sub department in Yangon and Mandalay also we are now working for that. So um, at the beginning stage, our, our uh, Department of IP would like to uh, conduct the online systems. Uh, so uh, that is a high risk of our IP department because we don't have it, uh, uh, the, any experiences on it. Uh, so that is why uh, 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 my personal feeling for conducting the IT uh, using the IT tools uh, is uh, quite reluctant at the beginning state. Now, our, uh, uh, I, I think uh, we are quite right position uh, because of our, uh, in this uh, pandemic situations, uh, we are uh, working, uh, trying hard to have it the, uh, the, the online registration system uh, that proposed by the WIPO. So uh, currently we can make use of it, this IT software. Uh, that call is IPO system and web filing system uh, that um, is quite uh, suitable in this situation. Uh, so now um, uh, we uh, start to introduce this online filing system for the agent uh, to uh, ease and smoothly uh, 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 submissions of the applications at the beginning stage. So um, that is um, uh, quite, uh, you know, um, challenges for our IP department because we have a very constraint, uh, uh, several constraints that are issue limit, our budget limit, and also you know uh, time limit as well. So that is why we are um, uh, 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 have to we 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 are uh, we are uh, have to do several testing and also training and also preparations for making use of this IT tools. And also staff recruitment. Uh, currently, we only have it the 40 staffs, and uh, we have to uh, have the new recruitment in the future. We expect it our our in, uh, in within this year uh, next uh, 50 persons that we will uh, recruit it, uh, 50 uh, numbers of staffs. So if possible. So uh, that is why we are quite trying to get the uh, more new staffs and to have a skill as quick as possible to uh, work in our IP implementation plan. For uh, so that is why are we are we although we have a very limited HR, but uh, we have it um, 
are very good skill in drafting of the examination guideline and user guideline and all the subject that we have to work on it. And also uh, for special training for trademark that we are taking and classification for multi-examination, substantive examinations training, not only for trademark subjects, we have to prepare for the staff to get the skill for other subjects as well. Uh, so that is why uh, we are, are quite uh, very busy or uh, in daily uh, running of uh, our, uh, our office day. Then also simultaneously, we would like to uh, have it the red awareness raving program for the all the audience in the few in the past time as well. Uh, whenever we have a chance, so we work together with the others agencies uh, to uh, deliver the IP knowledge to the people and public and uh, targeted audience. So we 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 did it uh, several several um, awareness program and education program. So that is a very are um, very good chance for our people to learn in and to make use of the IP system that we were into introducing uh, in the, uh, uh, in this moment and in the future. So um, now we have quite progressing uh, because our IP website have already are, are uh, um, prepared, uh, supported by the USAID. And uh, in this, uh, via this website, and we can uh, share uh, some up-to-date knowledge uh, for IPR. And also we make use of it, uh, some uh, social media like our Facebook, and we did it uh, some uh, virtual meeting and, and, and uh, live activities that any person who interested for IP subject that they can be learning easily uh, from our, our department of IP activities. So public awareness activities, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we are a very good chance to make use of the virtual meetings and some uh, discussion forum uh, via this. Uh, so we don't, uh, we really save our money and save time. And also uh, we can um, uh, uh, really a uh, very good uh, opportunity to uh, meet with the people or uh, not the physical, but uh, via the internet and, and, and and awareness program that we can sharing our and understanding each other and how uh, we can we can show up how our IP depart, uh, department of IP our activities uh, to the audience. So we also would like to have it um, uh, some consultations meetings with the IP or experts uh, from WIP or and others uh, Japan, US and and EU as well. So because uh, Myanmar is um, members of the ASEAN. And as well as we are uh, actively taking part in the uh, 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 the EWGIPC is working group of the intellectual property. Uh, so that is why we have to be uh, implemented and follow up to the senior member states uh, to taking part in each and every activities. And uh, so in our arts and we have it the development uh, partners collaborations as well. So our department of IP staffs are, are actively participate in all these activities as well. Oh dear DDG, so, since we have a limited time, uh, may I request you to uh, finalize in the next few minutes, please? Okay. Thank you. So Thank you. let me go quickly. Um, so uh, trademark law, as you know that, um, our uh, 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 trademark law is to uh, protect the uh, right owners to, uh, to have a very good chance and uh, fully use of uh, their, their rights in, in Myanmar uh, territorial. So that is why uh, we are now, um, uh, the trademark protection system is changing from, next slide. Our trademark protections is uh, changing from the current situations to the new situations. So in this slides, I'm uh, introducing the uh, current system is first to use system and, and, and uh, next system is first to file system. So in that uh, system, so you can see that the procedural that uh, trademark law are uh, mentioned uh, for the granting of the trademark right. So this is the first to write system and also pre-grant opposition system. So the whole uh, process of the trademark granting procedure. So applicant and others are persons that could have a chance to uh, have it making a comments uh, before granting of the the, the, the trademark registrations and as well as after trademark registrations. So any interested persons can get a chance to uh, make a cancellation and invalidations of the trademark registrations. 
So in our general pro uh, provisions on, on trademark, uh, tra uh, general provisions on trademark registrations is summarized in the uh, trademark law first to file system under this table. So uh, we will conduct it, we will accept the applications and first examination we will uh, 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 we will do uh, by the trademark examiners and formality requirements and absolute ground uh, then after our, after examining and we will publish for offering the oppositions that uh, that will take for two months. So uh, after uh, if not uh, any oppositions on a specific trademark, so that uh, trademark can be granted. Or uh, if not, uh, that is the opposition cases that we have to go in forward uh, the second examinations uh, that make use of it, the absolute grounds and relative grounds uh, oppositions, uh, oppositions that offer according to the law. So after granting and then uh, the trademark uh, right uh, can have it start from the filing date and then, then, then 10 years. So registration fees have to pay on that stage then are, uh, uh, every 10 years that uh, they can be renewed. So a trademark owner can get it their rights perpetual uh, if they continue for renewal stage. So um, invalidation cancellation procedure also, we propose it for our uh, changes or uh, of the interested person who um, have it uh, uh, a kind of right uh, to oppose it for the granting of the trademark. So, so for trademark implementations uh, for registrations uh, currently, um, so we have already uh, opened the soft opening of the old trademark. As you know that uh, currently is the uh, trademark uh, uh, first to use system and we have to transfer all these marks to the first to file system. So because of the difference of the two uh, different systems, uh, that is why we need uh, uh, some in the, interventions of the some uh, period uh, that have to be uh, transferring. That is why uh, we uh, pre uh, we, 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 we in advanced collections of the old trademark uh, by opening the soft opening and, and we now collecting via the trademark agent or uh, by using the, the web profile systems. So uh, after granting uh, the, 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 the applications of the old or new trademark, uh, will be started. Uh, uh, will be started when we are officially are the, the receive the all the applications there uh, when we enforce the trademark law. So in soft opening, next slide. Uh, that uh, that uh, figures uh, is showing are uh, your the processes of the trademark registration system. As you know that in green line, you can see it. Uh, this is the uh, this is the soft opening period uh, before. Granting, uh, granting uh, trademark uh, registration after enacting the trademark law. So uh, currently, we have already um, opened the first uh, uh, first uh, 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 first o uh, October two thousand twenty. Uh, we have started to collections of the old trademark uh, via the, the soft opening period. Uh, so uh, uh, now, uh, second step. Uh, will uh, will be introduced soon uh, to have it uh, uh, to have it the second stage. So in that second stage, they can pay the fees uh, for the uh, for the the, the the trademark applications and as well as the person who would like to apply themselves also can come over the counter uh, to apply their trademark. So that is why this is a second step. So that second step is not too long. And, and before the granting of the uh, trademark law, uh, then they can be uh, make use of it. For the old trademark, after granting also, also we will allow um, the, 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 the certain period, at least um, that we are planning in our regulation, although not confirmed, but uh, at least um, our six months, uh, they can be continued to apply their old trademark. But new trademark is starting to collect uh, when, the grand opening uh, start. So um, this is the trademark registration workflow. It's the very technical and the brief uh, examination procedural that I have introduced in the uh, first table. So that is why uh, this application structures uh, that uh, user uh, should understand how uh, our uh, examination process that we conducted uh, uh, from our uh, Department of Intellectual Property of Myanmar. 
So, so uh, I don't want to be explained in detail in such a procedure. So as I have already told you, our system is a first to file system that is uh, uh, the, the taking care uh, for such points so uh, the, the applicant should uh, have it the, the, the earliest date uh, for the applications of their trademark. And also our system is the pre-grant opposition system. So before the grantings of the trademark, so we will uh, offer the opposition process uh, for given the time for two months. So, so any objections from anyone, so they can be opposed for this uh, specific trademark uh, for that we will declare under the, uh, we will declare, we will publication, uh, we will make a publications uh, via the internet. So user can easily be checked the information that uh, we, uh, 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 that uh, we uh, share the information uh, for the examination status. So user also in the future, they can be easily check the status of their uh, applications uh, system uh, 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 via step-by-step. -step. And also we will offer more easier uh, uh, way to have it the, the applications of their uh, trademark and also, we would like to make it uh, uh, some efficient time frame uh, that uh, we have already uh, we have already discussed in our ASEAN as well. Time round time uh, for the, the, the general uh, procedure of the trademark and also uh, together with the opposition system, how long that we would like to be take it. So that is why uh, our procedure is the like an EU. Uh, pre-grant opposition system after granting as well. So any interested person, uh, because of this granting of the, uh, the mark, they have a chance to make use of it in validation cancellations. So in our trademark system, uh, we were also considering for the register and register well-known mark and how they were, we would like to be, uh, behave uh, for such a well-known trademark uh, according to the standard that proposed by the TRIPS agreement. And as well as for trick name, uh, they don't need to be having the, any registration system as well. So automatically they can be protected. And other things are um, uh, uh, some um, uh, necessity uh, information uh, that uh, we can, uh, we are now quite preparing for the trademark applicant and also agent how uh, they uh, make use of it, uh, all the information that proposed by our uh, the Department of IP in easier, easiest way of the implementations. So in the future, we will uh, make use of it, there's some consultation and as well as help desk uh, to help uh, to the, any uh, interested person who would like to make use of it, that this, uh, the, 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 the registration systems uh, for applications of the trademark uh, to our department. So um, trademark registrations uh, that I have already told you, uh, the, 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 the drafting rules, examination guidelines, forms and fees and user guidelines that now we are preparing after uh, in our website as well, in our uh, Facebook page. And we give the, some information for the uh, trademark users uh, for understanding uh, of the uh, subject matter and as well as uh, how they make use of it, the IT tools. Uh, and also the policy issue that we are going to conduct uh, for any registrations of uh, the, 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 uh, the IPR. So as you know that we are conducting the um, web profile uh, system. Uh, that is why we have to train to the users as well as our staffs as well. So IT experts from the WIPO is working closely together with us. And every week uh, we have a very good training and as well as our, the, the weekend as well, we have to be our, uh, manage our, and maintain uh, for our ID system. Now we are conducting the payment e-payment system uh, for the web of our users. And that is why uh, we are now working together with the bank uh, that, um, uh, that we will, the, that, uh, that, that, that they will conduct it uh, to, uh, to uh, for, for the payment uh, together with our, our department. So uh, our department is quite um, busy in these days, uh, examinations, IT training and self-training for the examiners and as well many awareness programs now we are quite um, are, are conducting for the IP users. So for the future innovation promotion as well, 
now we are, are make use of it the the the, the current situations via the uh, uh, via the virtual uh, virtual program uh, for conducting the every Friday IPR talk. So uh, via the IPR talk, uh, we are sharing the IP information to all the audience who are interested to learn about the IP and Myanmar IP systems. So that is why uh, we conducted the basic uh, IPR course that offer by the WIPO and distant learning courses. Are, uh, so, and later on, and we were more progressing and more deeply learning of the IPR. Uh, so for learning for our Myanmar IPR laws, uh, new laws, and as well as other international treaties, and as well as how uh, IP management, they make use of it in university research department, and as well as for the IP agent, how they have to be uh, learning uh, the information from us. So um, let me have it, um, I'll get the information uh, for all the users uh, that uh, if they would like to relearn it, uh, but um, majority of our discussions are in Myanmar language. So in our Facebook page, IB Myanmar, so you can, uh, you can uh, have a look and also you can see the, the, the awareness program. In YouTube as well, uh, we conducted the, some IBA discussions that <clears throat> that uh, we are uh, taking some video and uh, answering questions uh, for our IP implementations and IBA laws matters. So our uh, Emma TV uh, also we have already um, broadcasting uh, for the people and also these uh, video finds all they can learn uh, via the YouTube as well in Facebook and our uh, uh, name is IP Myanmar currently and website is www.ipd.gov.mn. So in that uh, web page also you can learn it and then you uh, can also give the, any comments and suggestions and any contact uh, to us to give the, um, some suggestions and advice and some consultation also we can be contacted. So in conclusion, so our Department of Intellectual Property are, is uh, putting great effort uh, to have it the progress for the implementations of the intellectual property law, laws uh, as uh, early as possible. And I have already told you, uh, we are preparing several things and also new recruitment is also coming up. And also we have a more work uh, for trainings of our new staffs as well. So IT infrastructures, reception counters, and also demanding for the government and other development partners, uh, whatever we have it and fulfill uh, our requirements uh, to have it the uh, readiness uh, for the implementations of the IPO laws. So we hope that uh, we are very um, near future and we can have it a very good chance uh, for an amendment of our IPO laws. So now we are quite preparing for the second stage of the uh, soft opening according to the order that we make it in 28th of um, October uh, 2020. So uh, our second stage, uh, that also we have to work on several steps uh, to have it as well. So we will be announced uh, for opening of the second step in which date and how they have to implement it and which, um, uh, which way that they have to pay and as well as uh, all the information for the users that we will be propose it, um, that information. Uh, so, and also uh, start from the soft opening every month. Um, we conducted, I think, uh, more than 20 lectures and, uh, and disseminations of the message from our Department of Intellectual Property to the IB by profile users, how they are, can make use of it, the IP tools, and as well as our IPR issues. And also every month, or after analysis of the applications of the trademark applications, and uh, we give the some suggestions and uh, uh, some comments for the users, and also some more information uh, to for the users to make use of it. So um, we hope that uh, we can be and that is uh, our grand opening in uh, early of this year. So that is a contact email and you can, uh, you can give any questions and some information uh, via the mmyprofile at gmail.com. That is for IT matter. And for trademark matter for subject implementations um, and whatever questions that you have it, you can uh, you make use of IBDPD dot 
inquiry at gmail.com. And uh, finally, web profile user accounts, admin at ipd.gov.mn. So according to the subject, we separate it and, and give it a different email. So uh, because uh, the different uh, responsible persons are taking and giving the response to them. So that is why uh, uh, based on the, your concern and you, you, you can make use of it, a different uh, email address to contact it, uh, contact it to us. Thank you very much for your kind attention and any uh, questions that uh, you would like to be make it clear for my presentations, I will very pleased to answer. Thank you very much. And thank you, DDG, for your wisdom and very extensive um, discussion. And of course, your dialect efforts in transforming the idea and treatment and state in Myanmar. Uh, I apologize to our attendees for our programs going over time, but I, I believe that you know you find this very valuable and useful for you. So if you can, I would encourage you all to stay longer than planned, as our next discussion is promised to be very interactive and interesting. For the next agenda, uh, we have uh, another outstanding speaker to share his expertise. So Mr. Daniel Grief is the uh, external expert of Southeast Asia IPA SME Hubdesk which your chairman is jointly organizing this webinar discussion. Mr. Grief is also the uh, uh, director of Southeast Asia and senior trademark authority at the uh, Smith and Olof Intellectual Property. He has over 20 years of trademark practices in some of the biggest multinational companies such as Sony and Coca-Cola. So without further ado, uh, please, uh, Daniel, uh, we can't wait to hear your insight. Over to you. Okay, um, thank you very much. It's a great honor to be here. Uh, I have a, a, a tough uh, show to follow after going out to Mo Mo. Uh, she's given an incredible presentation and uh, given wonderful details on what is happening in Myanmar, with the uh, intellectual property laws. I'd like to congratulate her and Myanmar on the uh, implementation of the laws. Uh, I first went to Myanmar about 30 years ago and have been uh, watching and helping to some degree with the International Trademark Association, the, uh, making suggestions on the new law and so forth. And they've done a wonderful job. And it's a very exciting time for the Myanmar intellectual property, for the people of Myanmar, consumers, commercial activities and so forth. So uh, many congratulations to Momo and her entire team on the wonderful job they've done. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I was asked to give you a, a brief um, uh, summary of what the Southeast Asia IP SME Help Desk does. Uh, I'd just like to start by saying once again, they, I've been, uh, had the honor to be uh, part of this SME Help Desk for a number of years now. They do wonderful work. They put on excellent webinars, excellent seminars. The materials on the website are absolutely top notch. So anybody that hasn't used it in the past, I highly encourage you to take a look at it. Um, I will read the uh, notes here that I was asked to read. Uh, the Southeast Asia IP SME Help Desk is an initiative of the European Commission to help European small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, to protect and enforce their intellectual property rights in or relation to Southeast Asia. All services provided by the Help Desk are free of charge for EU SMEs and intermediaries. On this slide, you can see the range of services offered by the Help Desk. First, through the inquiry helpline, you can send any IP questions related to Southeast Asia to the help desk and receive a reply within three working days. Second, the help desk organizes monthly training workshops and live webinars, which is tailored to the needs of SMEs across Europe and Southeast Asia throughout the year. Please feel free to subscribe to its newsletter and connect with the team on social media to keep yourself updated on the upcoming activities. Three, the Help Desk website gives you access to a wide range of publications in terms of country fact sheets, <coughs> industry specific IP guides, or general IP guides on various IP topics. These guides can be easily found on the Help Desk website. Four, last but not least, the Help Desk also offers interactive learning tools, for example, e learning mo modules, which are also available for download from the official website. As I said, the SME Help Desk is an outstanding. Um, outstanding help desk and something I strongly encourage people to look to. Okay, here's my bio. I've been uh, practicing intellectual property law, especially on trademarks for over 30 years. So I'm sort of 
dating myself. Um, one of the highlights of my career was being uh, for more than 20 years, International Trademark Counsel uh, for the Coca-Cola Company and Senior Trademark Counsel at Sony Corporation. So I come at this from a sort of an in-house perspective. Uh, um, and even back in, back in the days, going back to 1980s when I was working at Sony Corporation and working at Coca-Cola, um, I've been dealing with uh, IP and trademarks in, in Myanmar. So here's the agenda, uh, the history and process of some of the former, former trademark related laws. I think we're probably a bit um, uh, short on time. So I'll probably, uh, will go through the, uh, the current system or the former system very quickly. The slides are there. You can take a look at those anytime. If you have any questions, of course, you can ask me, uh, but I'll probably go through those slides very quickly and go on to the new trademark law. Momo has copied or uh, addressed many of the issues that I'll be speaking about and done so better than I, I will do, but I will look at, uh, discuss them and give you my perspective from my perspective as a uh, lawyer helping uh, large corporations and SMEs uh, to register their trademarks and deal with their trademark issues in Myanmar. So we'll deal with the new trademark law registration practices, the new trademark law infringement action practices, and the benefits of the new trademark law. On the benefits of the new trademark law, I'll go ahead and make some comments now. I don't have a specific slide on that. I'd just like to say the new trademark is, is a welcome development. It brings uh, clarity and certainty to the trademark practice in Myanmar, which will allow uh, trademark owners, brand owners to register their trademarks with certainty. It will allow them to uh, sort of enhance their trademarks, to renew their trademarks, to, to be certain they have trademark rights. And it will also is going to be very helpful as far as uh, enforcing trademark rights, litigating and uh, dealing with contentious matters and infringements and counterfeits. So many benefits, so it's a great day. It's a welcome day that the new trademark law is here. And once again, I think I congratulate Momo and her entire team for an excellent job. So just quick background, the, uh, and Momo knows better than me once again, but the, uh, I, my understanding is the, uh, there goes back at least to 2004, where the, there was an intellectual property rights implementa implementation committee in Myanmar. Uh, the IP laws were drafted based on the World Intellectual Property Organization model law and international conventions and agreements and from other, the laws of other IP developed countries. So Myanmar took, the, took a lot of input from a lot of stakeholders and actors, trademark offices, WIPO and so forth, and implemented a very outstanding trademark law. Um, once again, I'm gonna go through this quickly, but this shows sort of in the past, there was no specific trademark law, no specific trademark office but you had a number of laws, including the Penal Code and Merchandise Marked Act that allowed for a process to record, register trademarks at the Registry of Deeds and to then publish in newspapers was sort of the process in the past. And, and indeed it's still the process because my understanding is, in, uh, is that the current or the old practice is still in place until the grand opening of the new law comes into place uh, at the end, or begin, I guess April 1 at this point. So um, although I'll be, I refer to the old law, but what I understand is the old practice is still in place for a couple more months now anyway. So once again, uh, the marks weren't officially registered in the past. They were registered at the Registry of Deeds and the practice was after they were registered, recorded at the Registry of Deeds to have a publication in a Myanmar newspaper uh, and then there was no process to search trademarks. So when you were trying to figure out if your mark was available for registration or not, there was no process to search trademarks uh, at the trademark at the registry of deeds, but there were newspaper publication searches, but they, they weren't 100% uh, comprehensive. And so they were uncertain. Um, so there was a lot of uncertainty as to the trademark rights sort of under the old system. Uh, there was, uh, you could bring actions for infringement under the old penal code or the penal code and, but there weren't many trademark cases uh, in Myanmar in the past. Uh, with that said, there were several and those cases did give some kind of a, 
uh, precedent and some in the kind of indication of how you could proceed to enforce your rights. And there are also uh, me mechanisms under the old system to enforce rights uh, with uh, various government officials and so forth. And I had the opportunity to stop uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of counterfeits and infringing matters for uh, Coca-Cola, Sony, and other, other clients over the years in, in Myanmar. So I'm gonna go forward through all these slides real quick now and get up to the new trademark law, but you can look at these uh, anytime. I, I think we are a little bit um, uh, short on time, so I'm just gonna click through these real quick. Uh, so would, I will say here, the documents for, submitted for the old, in the old system were declaration of ownership, power of attorney, application form, stamp duty, Here's an example of the declaration of ownership uh, that was filed or is filed at the, the registry of deeds. You had to specify the company, the trademark specified. Uh, if the company had to solely claim exclusive rights to the trademark. So you had to complete the application form, pay a stamp duty. You needed witnesses. Um, it took approximately six to eight weeks to get the registration. And then after you got a registration or record what was called, you would publish in a Myanmar newspaper. That was the practice for many years. Here's an example of a trademark publication notice. This is um, uh, one of my clients, Procter & Gamble. Uh, and it's a trademark cautionary notice there on the bottom right-hand side for head and shoulders. Okay. Here we are for a poll question. So I think I turn it over to uh, Ted Saul now to uh, address the poll question. So I believe everybody's supposed to look at the question and uh, try to give, give it an appropriate answer. Okay, uh, I think I was going to get the, uh, the samples of the answer, but I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll go ahead and give the answers now. Uh, under the former Myanmar trademark law, oh, here we go, there we go. So let's see how everybody did. Under the former Myanmar trademark practices, what documents need to be filed at the Registry of Deeds? Declaration of ownership, uh, that, is, that is correct. Publication notice, nobody said that, and that, that's correct also, is actually after you have a registration, you would publish in a newspaper, and that would be the publication notice. Uh, power of attorney, 3% of the people said uh, power of attorney, and actually power of attorney is one of the documents that needed to be filed, so it's the declaration of ownership and the power of attorney. Uh, one, I think, big improvement in the new uh, law and the new practice is that my understanding is, and Momo can correct me if I'm wrong, is that a power of attorney is not going to be necessary under the, um, under the new system. In the old system, you needed to have a power of attorney. It needed to be notarized and it needed to be legalized, which took, is a long process and a, a difficult process to get legalized, but that's gone. Uh, an affidavit from director of trademark owner, that is not correct. So the two correct answers are declaration of ownership and power of attorney. So everybody got the declaration of ownership. Um, so thank you. So we'll move on now. Okay, new Myanmar IP laws. Um, there are, as Momo said, new laws covering trademarks, patents, designs, and copyrights. There were cons consultations done with a number of stakeholders. As I said, World Intellectual Property Organization, uh, JETRO, which is a Japan a external trade organization, Japan Patent Office, and many others. 
Uh, it was approved on January 30th, 2019. Uh, one welcome development on the new trademark law is it has a broad definition of a mark. I'm uh, a true lover of uh, uh, broad definitions of trademarks and uh, non-traditional uh, non trademarks and so forth. So we have a somewhat uh, broad definition of trademarks under the new law, which says any marking that can be seen by the eyes, including proper names, alphabets, numbers, shape designs, and color combinations, which make a product or service uh, different from other products or services. So that's a, a good broad definition of trademarks in line with many of the uh, leading uh, trademark offices or trademark laws around the world. So that's that's welcome. Um, my understanding is that auditory and olfactory marks are not included. So hearing and smell trademarks are not included. Those are sort of, let's say, advanced trademarks that uh, um, uh, countries that are accepting uh, non-traditional trademarks look at, but those are difficult to implement. And I, it's probably, I think it's wise for uh, Myanmar not to address such trademarks. Perhaps that will happen in the future, but maybe not, it's not a good time to address those immediately. Um, so uh, trademarks, service marks, collective marks and certification marks are included. And also their uh, geographical indications are included in the new law as well. The register is responsible for supervising the functions relating to registration, all the examination of applications, designing on grant or refusal of registration, and keeping and maintaining the registry of register of marks. Uh, as far as part of the uh, uh, process, the trademarks can be registered for or can are not register registrable for. Uh, various reasons. For instance, if they're generics, like you can't register water for water, that's a generic term. Lack distinctiveness, or it's descriptive of characteristic goods or services, something like blue water, maybe blue wouldn't be registrable because it's descriptive of characteristic of the, of the water. Uh, if it's against the peace, tranquility, or morality of Myanmar. Uh, and then you have the relative grounds that are de dealt with in Myanmar under the opposition procedures, and we'll talk about that more if they're identical, similar to applied for or registered mark, identical or similar to a famous mark, uh, applications filed in bad faith. So those type of marks will not be registrable under the new trademark law. So uh, Momo addressed this, but I'll make comments on this as well. After filing a trademark application, the registrar examines the application for form formalities and absolute grounds. Formalities just means the technical aspects of sort of the name, whether the trademark is specified appropriately, has the appropriate description of goods, et cetera. Absolute grounds are uh, things like genericness or whether it's not distinctive or whether it's against morality of the country. Uh, if, if it meets those criteria, it will be approved for publication where it's publicized in a manual uh, or online, I guess. And then third parties will have an opportunity to oppose uh, the trademark. And at that point, during the opposition proceeding, relative grounds would be looked at. And that's where the, the uh, issue of a likelihood of confusion or similarity with earlier filed trademarks is addressed. So Myanmar is leaving that sort of relative ground to be decided and addressed at the opposition proceeding. Uh, if the um, notification or if the initial application doesn't conform to the appropriate formalities or absolute grounds, it would be sent back to the applicant to conform to the regulations and make a, a new submission uh, and they can address that and then it will the mark will be approved for publication at the appropriate time if no opposition is filed the registration will issue and i may have the timing of that not 100 percent correct uh, and i think once again momo gave a, a better sort of explanation of the timing on how that all works but essentially the formalities and absolute grounds are being dealt with by the trademark office. The relative grounds, the likelihood of confusion grounds are being dealt with through um, opposition proceedings. Term is 10 years. Uh, my understanding is there'll be a renewal within six months prior to the expiration date uh, or by paying an extra fee six months after the renewal date, 10 year terms, fees for renewal and any late fees uh, are going to be uh, uh, determined later and promulgated later, and those will be addressed. 
Uh, the wonderful thing about trademarks for anybody, I think with most people here, are sophisticated uh, people who have a lot of understanding of trademark law and so forth. But the wonderful thing about trademarks is they can last forever if there is continuous use. So here we are. Um, if, a register, if you register a mark under the new law, you have the right to stop third party uses, to litigate, litigate against infringers, to monetize your trademark, that is transfer or assign, license your rights. So those are means that you can make money, monetize your trademark rights. Um, trademarks are not an absolute right though. You can't keep people from using in good faith the trademark, for perhaps for comparative matters. Uh, are using with consent of the owner, of course. So we talked already about the absolute grounds and relative grounds. Uh, invalidation actions can be filed by any interested party by, against both the absolute grounds like genericness, uh, lack of distinctiveness, or relative grounds, likelihood of confusion. Trademarks can be canceled for non-use if they haven't been used for three consecutive years. There are going to be many things that are going to be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of years. And one, one will be interesting to see is uh, what is considered uh, not used in commerce for a good reason. In some countries like Thailand, uh, it's very difficult to cancel a trademark for non-use uh, because they sort of accept uh, a lot of good reasons for non-use. So we don't have many cancellation actions for non-use in Thailand. It'll be interesting to see how the law develops and how the practice develops on a number of grounds in Myanmar. The likelihood of confusion analysis, the non-use analysis. Uh, so all of those are going to be, be quite interesting. And with any new trademark law or modification of trademark law, there is some uncertainty. There are some challenges. There are some difficulties that take place at the trademark office and for practitioners and owners of trademarks to address their, their rights. But uh, over time, everything will uh, be worked out and there'll be a lot of clarity. So we're in the soft opening now. The soft opening started on October 1. It goes to the end of March. Um, at one point, I thought it might be extended or I'd heard it might be extended, but I think Momo indicated that it is indeed going to end at the end of March. So I think the grand opening is going to start as of April 1. Uh, marks eligible for refiling are marks that have been previously registered at the Registry of Deeds marks that have been put in actual use in Myanmar. So either one. Uh, documents required for if you're filing uh, from a previously registered mark, you have to submit the declaration of ownership. You need clear specimen of the trademark, the owner's name and address, of course, classes listed goods and color claims, if any. Documents required, once again, use-based application. You need to, you're gonna probably have to, or you're gonna have to submit evidence of use so if you're filing a use-based application, you should be working with your, as a brand owner or trademark owner, you should be collecting all the information you have on use, receipts, marketing activity, advertising activity, uh, et cetera, to show that you have had actual use of the mark before the, the um, uh, so you can file during the soft opening. Um, for declaration of ownership applications, you need the details to read for read file mark must be the same. Uh, scopes of goods and services uh, can be the same or they can actually, should be the same or they can actually be narrower. So you could, you could reduce the number of goods and services. And there, we could discuss why separately in a separate discussion, uh, why that uh, might be a good idea, but uh, you could narrow the scope of goods and services if you want. When to refile anytime during the soft opening, if you had a prior declaration of ownership or use, uh, substantive exam examination, as I said, will take place during the oppositions. Best to file as soon as possible during the soft opening. So if you had declaration of ownership in the past or you had use in the past, get your mark filed during the soft opening. The filing date will be deemed the first for all marks filed during the soft opening will be the, uh, deemed the first day of the grand opening. So it's very important if you do have a declaration of ownership in the past for a mark or you have used in the past, get your marks filed during the grand op uh, opening. So suggested steps uh, for brand owners. And if you haven't done this already, you better do it quick. Undertake an analysis of current trademarks, decide which trademarks are important to your commercial activities, uh, do a cost benefit analysis, determine 
because for SMEs, a lot, of, most of the time, money is definitely a consideration. If you're, you know, when I work for big companies, uh, they often will have a big budget and they'll file pretty much for everything they can, but SMEs definitely need to do a strong cost benefit analysis to determine what to file. File during the soft opening, absolutely possible. File new marks, be ready to file new marks on day one of the grand opening because the sooner you file your mark, the better. You want that early application date. Uh, so talk to your trademark counsels if you're a, a brand owner and get everything in order as quickly as possible. Collect materials and prepare the applications. So uh, as I said, there's a lot of direction that we're going to have to get as time goes on and Momo and her excellent team will be doing this. Official fees are coming. Uh, my understanding is there's going to be a T2 form as opposed to a power of attorney, which is great because it's an appointment of re representative form. It only will need to be notarized as opposed to notarized and legalized under the power of attorney practices in the past. Um, there'll be, we'll be getting more clarity on trademark office processes. For some time, there's going to be uncertainty, difficulty, challenges, uh, probably some inconsistencies in the trademark office analysis and in the opposition analysis and even the court analysis. But as time goes on and the uh, entities, the government entities and the trademark office and so forth in Myanmar uh, have uh, um, uh, worked with the processes and so forth, we'll get more clarity. Uh, collect your evidence of use. There's going to be difficulty or once again, there's going to be, you know, issues as to what is considered sufficient evidence of use, uh, what marks are considered likely to create confusion and which aren't, what are considered descriptive terms, et cetera. So I think a lot of confusion, a lot of uncertainty, some real challenges for some time, but uh, things will get better as we go forward. Okay, poll question two. Um, why is the soft opening of the new trademark important? Number one, provides opportunity to re-register marks previously registered in Myanmar at the Registry of Deeds. Number two, marks filed during the soft opening are guaranteed registration. Three, will provide the earliest possible, earliest priority date possible. And four, there are no official fees for marks filed during the soft opening. So let's see what the answers are. Ah, I see. So, thank you, Thomas. Thomas uh, Griffin just indicated to me you only select one answer. So I, I see. So my questions actually have two answers. So I didn't realize that when I created the question. So thank you for that, Thomas. So we'll, all right, there we go. So it looks like almost everybody got the right answer. Uh, one of the right answers, and I apologize. I didn't realize you couldn't get two answers. Uh, provides opportunity to re-register marks previously registered in Myanmar at the Registry of Deeds. That's correct. We had 24 answers for that. The other correct answer um, is uh, we'll provide the earliest earliest priority date possible. That That is correct because you'll get the priority date as of the first day of the grand opening. So that is those two are the correct answers and apologies. I didn't realize you couldn't do two answers. Thank you. Okay, so um, actions against infringement. So a registered trademark owner can file civil or criminal actions based on their registered trademarks with the intellectual property court. And that's a wonderful thing that there's gonna be an intellectual property court. So that will have, 
will allow uh, greater understanding by the judges and so forth to address trademark issues and other intellectual property matters. So welcome development and what want the something that's worked very well in Thailand in other countries where they do have intellectual property courts. So the remedies are permanent preliminary injunctions, right to inspect premises, provisional seizure, compensation for the brand owner, the trademark owners, removing or destruction of goods and preventing infringing goods from channels of trade. So I think this is language is taken directly almost directly from the law or the translation of the law, penalties on a new trademark law. So whoever is convicted of any of the following acts without the approval of the owner of the trademark for commercial purposes or assisting the person committing the offense shall be punished with an imprisonment not exceeding three years with a fine not ex exceeding 5 million kiats or both. So these are the, um, the following are the uh, uh, violations, forgery of a trademark, using a false trademark in goods or services, keeping in possession of articles equipment mainly used for forgery of a trademark or for using a false trademark in goods, selling, buying and distributing goods bearing a false trademark, importing into or export from the state goods bearing false trademarks. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how the litigations arise, but I think relatively quickly, we're gonna get a number of cases that will give us direction as to exactly what is considered uh, inappropriate use of the trademarks. And that's going to be a welcome development, as I said, because uh, we're going to get more clarity, a greater understanding, a body of law, and that's all going to be good for trademark owners and for consumers and ultimately for the country of Myanmar. So as I said, I welcome the new trademark law and see it as an outstanding development for brand owners, trademark owners, for the people in Myanmar and for the country of Myanmar to, to progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Very, very interesting discussion. Um, even though we are, you know, like over time for 27 minutes now, we still have, you know, so many people stay, you know, sticking around. Thank you for that. Uh, due to the time constraint, we won't be able to go over all the questions. We have so many really good questions, but please make sure to send them to the uh, UHM email address, which we will share in the chat box and we will forward them to the uh, IB department for the clarification. Alternatively, you can also, you know, send it directly to the uh, IB department as the uh, DDG mentioned before. So uh, let me get two questions uh, that I selected, uh, directed to the uh, DDG, uh, Siama, uh, DG, uh, Dr. Mumutwe. Uh, so the first question is, uh, so when will the second soft opening period for the uh, TrackMed filing start? That is the first question. Another question is which is more on the broad spectrum. So is there any uh, possibility for Myanmar to drive in the near future, the metric, uh, Madrid uh, protocol for the trademark registration? So these are the two uh, uh, straightforward questions for you, Siama. Thank you. For the presentations are for uh, Myanmar trademark systems uh, is quite informative for the users who understand uh, who need to be understand according to the procedure and requirements for the information. Thank you for your questions as well. And our, for the first questions for second step for the soft opening that we are quite trying uh, going forward that the confirmations from the Union Attorney General Office and also internal procedure is running. So um, I couldn't say currently the exact date, uh, but um, um, I, I hope um, uh, within the uh, within next month that uh, might be possible if we can get it. The all the procedure have already uh, done are uh, uh, from the others department and confirmation because from some fees that we have to pass over the cabinet as well. So that is the time are needed for us to get the uh, in time uh, preparations for submitted to the report, you know, uh, to the cabinet as well. So that's why I'm sorry that I couldn't uh, give the exact answers for the day for second step. And for second step questions, um, for metric protocol, of course, uh, we will uh, going to conduct, uh, going to enter into the metric protocol sooner or later after the implementations of the trademark law system. Um, 
I'm not saying that um, um, uh, the, 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 after the implementations, uh, this is uh, quite long, uh, but uh, we need uh, some in, uh, the national experiences for at least a year, you know, uh, to have it uh, national, uh, the registrations uh, first uh, to get the experiences on that. And, but within that period, we will prepare for entering into the metric protocol. So one year after, and I think we can be, you know, make use of it the metric system. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Tiamat. Uh, for clarifying the uh, question. So uh, thank you, thank you once again uh, to DDG uh, Dr. Dr. Momotue and Daniel for your very interesting talk and presentations. I hope everyone is as fascinated as I am on the uh, IPR and trademark after these two presentations. Even though we are, you know, over the time, I thank you once again for everyone, you know, stay, uh, sticking around and you know, uh, waiting for the uh, answer. For more information, as usual, please visit the uh, IP department website as they have a very good collection of everything needs to be done for the uh, trademark registration. And you can also reach out to us, uh, Saudi Asia IP uh, SME help desk for the uh, questions or more information. Uh, this, is a, this is one of the uh, many IP uh, and the trademark related topics that we are organizing together with the uh, Saudi Asia uh, IP uh, SME help desk. And we hope to host other related topics together. Also, hopefully, with the uh, support of Siama DDG and the uh, Department of Intellectual uh, Property in Kamiman. So, until then, uh, stay safe, and I hope to see you all soon, uh, very soon, hopefully virtually or in person. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.